What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about dash cams. A uh, quick shout out to the guys over at Black Box My Car for sponsoring this video and for sending me this brand new Thinkware FA200 dash cam, which we will be installing in my 335i today. So before we go any further, let's discuss what a dash cam actually is. So a dash cam is a tiny cost-effective video camera that more and more drivers are actually using in their vehicles to protect themselves in the case of an accident. Dash cams are typically placed on the dashboard or the windshield of your car and it constantly records while you drive. I'm going to give you guys a list of the top five reasons why I think having a dash cam is important to have in your vehicle. First, the most obvious one is going to be used as evidence during a car accident. So like I mentioned earlier, having a dash cam in your vehicle, um, it actually continually records as you're driving your vehicle. So if you happen to get into a car accident or something of that nature, all of that will be documented and recorded on your dash cam. Number two on my list is parking accidents. A lot of novice drivers these days have the tendency to bump or scratch other people's vehicles as they're trying to park their own. So a lot of the dash cams on the market today actually have the ability to record while your vehicle is parked, which may come in handy and serve as proof in the form of video footage. Number three on my list is protecting your teenage driver. Teenage drivers have some of the highest interest rates due to their lack of experience behind the wheel. Anything you can do to protect your teenage driver from a speeding ticket or an accident is well worth the effort. Number four on my list is fraud protection. When it comes to vehicles and traffic, Insurance fraud is one of the biggest problems nowadays. Some drivers will actually deliberately cause an accident in order to blame the other driver and extort money from their insurance company. Having a dash cam may prevent you from being scammed. Number five on my list is recording unexpected events. This could be something great like a road trip or it could be something not so great. But having a dash cam will give you the ability to capture something when you least expect it to. All right, now that we've talked about what a dash cam is and what my top five reasons for owning one is, we can move on to the Thinkware FA200 brought to you by Black Box My Car. If you're looking for the perfect dash cam, definitely go check out Black Box My Car's website and take a look and see what they've got. For this particular model, it's actually currently on sale for $149.99. And again, this is the Thinkware FA200 Wi-Fi dash cam. So let's talk about what some of the features are on this particular dash cam and why we're going to install it on my 335i. I actually currently have a dash cam here in my 335 that I transferred over from a previous vehicle. I currently have is a VOFO A119. This is a 2K 1080p 60 frame per second dash cam. It actually has a nice screen here which comes in handy. However, the differences here between this one and the new Thinkware uh, FA200 model is that the VOFO does not have a rear channel. So we are going to be replacing the VOFO, uh, which I actually also purchased from um, Black Box My Car. And we're going to be replacing it with the FA200, which has a two channel, uh, both front and rear cameras. In addition to that, it's got a couple other features which we're going to get into, but I think this is gonna be the better model. For a value driven dash cam, the Thinkware FA200 model is a little bit sexier than the VFO. It's got a kind of a slimmer design and it fits really well behind um, any type of rear view mirror. So I think this is gonna look a little bit nicer as well. First off, let's talk about video quality with the Thinkware FA200. As I mentioned, this is a two channel dash cam. The front camera is a 1080p full HD camera and the rear is a 720p HD camera. In addition to that, the camera has a 140 degree wide angle. So it should give us really good coverage of the road. It also has a very wide dynamic range, which means that it'll provide the best exposure and contrast in any type of environment. Next up is parking mode. The FA200 model provides uh, time-lapse, impact detection, motion detection, and energy saving modes as well. So for the time-lapse, it actually records footage at a lower frame rate uh, to cover a longer period of surveillance and reduced video file size. Impact detection will monitor any impact to the vehicle while it's parked to catch any hit and run driver in the act. And motion alert will monitor and capture any motion around the vehicle for potential vandalism attempts. So those are some really nice features that the uh, VOFO model that I currently have does not provide. To me, the coolest feature with the FA200 model is the built-in Wi-Fi. I'm able to connect my mobile device to my dash cam and actually access any previously recorded footage, live footage, or make any setting changes. 
The FA200 model also provides excellent night quality, which maintains its performance in low light conditions. It also has integrated thermal protection, which means that it has super capacitors and thermal sensors that provide safety and reliability in extreme temperatures. Here's a list of what's included with the Thinkware FA200. You'll have a front camera, an optional rear camera, a 12 volt power cable, micro SD card, a USB micro SD card reader, windshield mount, spare 3M tape, adhesive cable clips, a quick start guide, and a one year manufacturer warranty. Black Box My Car also sells additional accessories with the FA200 model. If you want to enable parking mode, you'll want to buy one of these battery packs here, which will help double the parking mode recording uh, to maximize protection. It will also have a hardwire kit here that you'll need in order to enable the parking mode. This also will help free up your um, cigarette lighter in your car. In addition, they also sell a CPL filter, which will help reduce glare, reflection, and will improve overall video quality. All right, now that we've talked about all of the cool features of the FA200, let's go ahead and remove the current one and start installing the new dash cam. Okay, before we get started here, we need to remove the current VOFO uh, dash cam that I currently have in the car. Um, I do not have this one currently hardwired, so I just went ahead and unplugged the current one, and all I did was I ran the wire uh, basically underneath the glove box, all the way up through here, up the A pillar, and then up on the, uh, the roof line there, and mounted it. So we're basically going to do the exact same thing with the front dash cam. The rear dash cam, after we connect up there, we're going to run a line basically on the roof line from the front here, passenger side, all the way to the rear, and then we're gonna mount in the rear uh, by the third brake light on the top. So, all right, so what we're gonna do first here is remove this little panel. I've got some trim tools here. We're also going to remove this A-pillar piece, um, and then we should be able to have access to my wire that I placed and ran all the way around here. So I'm gonna pop this piece off here, take a trim tool, wedge it right here in the corner just like that. I don't think I need to take it completely off because I just need to be, need to be able to reach my hand in there and access the wire. Uh, for this part here, I'm going to use my trim tool, start on the top, kind of wedge it in just like that. Give it a pry, pull it off. There we go. So basically what you need to do is pry off this upper portion here that's got a metal clip and then there are two of these white clips. There's one here, one here, which is still left in the car here, but there's a couple little tabs here on the bottom that slide into place. So once you pull this one free, all you need to do is slide it up and out. All right, now that we've got that one removed, we're gonna go ahead and uh, open up the Thinkware. So I'm actually going to use this VOFO on my M3. So be on the lookout for another video, install video for that um, coming shortly. So I've already kind of opened this up, but this is what the Thinkware looks like when you uh, receive this in the mail. <clears throat> looks just like this. This one here, I believe is the front camera. Put it up here. Quick start guide. Some customer service information, Thinkware cloud information. Got a wiring kit, a little mounting clip here. This is the rear camera. Uh, this also has some clips here for mounting the wire behind. Um, if I want to use these, there's, there's, they're 3M taped on the back side, and uh, just to help hide the wires. Extra. Uh, 3M tape for the back side of the mount. We've got a 16 gig memory card here. And then this is going to be the longer wiring harness which runs from the front camera to the rear camera. That's it. Okay, now that we've got it all unboxed here, um, this is what the camera looks like. So the lens is right here in the front. If you flip it over, there's a couple buttons back here. There's a record button. This is the Wi-Fi button. There's a Wi-Fi indicator light as well as a status indicator light. Um, on the side here, there's a VIN input, a GPS port, and then the other side, this is where the micro SD card is going to go. So what we're gonna do first is install the SD card. 
Go ahead and open this up. Take out your micro SD. Do not lose this one here. This is the adapter um, for the SD card. So once you, if you need to pull off any video footage, you can take it out of the dash cam, install it into the adapter, and then plug it right into your computer. So don't lose this port. Uh, what we're gonna do here is now plug in the SD card in the back side. Just like that. We've got our mount here. There's a little knob here. Once you unscrew that, this allows this portion to pivot. So what we're gonna do is slide this on. Just like so, it should snap into place. And uh, that's basically what it looks like. It allows it to pivot just like that. And once you get it where you want it, go ahead and knock, lock it down. And that'll keep it from spinning. So once we get in the car, we'll have to make some adjustments and figure out how we need to position this, but that's basically what that looks like there. So now that we've got all of this unboxed, I just realized that it did come with a hardwire kit instead of the cigarette lighter um, cable instead. So we are going to actually be able to hardwire this into the ECU. So this is gonna add a couple extra steps, but it's gonna be more of a permanent solution and I won't be sacrificing my cigarette lighter. This is what the rear camera looks like. There's the lens. This is the 3M sticky side on the back. Um, this pivots a little bit, so we'll have to play around with uh, what angle we need there. And then just on the side here is the uh, video out port. So basically what we're gonna do here is run this long wire from the front camera and the video in, run it up against the headliner in the car to the back side plug it in here and now we've got power to the rear camera. So with the hardwire kit here, we actually plug this in the back of the front camera. So there's actually a DC in port right here that this will plug into. And then we're gonna have to run this hardwire uh, to the fuse box, which is located in the trunk. So uh, we're gonna have to tap into a fuse and see which one we want to utilize. But the good thing again is that by having a hardwire kit, we won't have to sacrifice uh, using a cigarette lighter um, outlet instead. So let's get to it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do here is mount the front camera. And I think I've decided to put it right here, but just below the uh, rear view mirror here. That way it's directly in the center of the windshield and it's not obstructing any of my views. I can see it just a little bit here, right below the, the uh, mirror here, but I think it's gonna be fine just like that. And I'd rather have it in the spot that's gonna give me the most coverage. So we're gonna go ahead and mount this first and then what we're gonna do is connect the wires. We're gonna run it up here. So we're actually going to take the, off this plastic part behind the mirror and run the wires up, up through there. That way we can hide everything and then up into the headliner and across this way and back. All right, so we've exposed the 3M double-sided tape. And again, we can adjust uh, adjust the angle after we get it up here. So I'm just gonna line this up as best I can, just below the mirror. Okay, now that we've got the camera mounted, we're gonna go ahead and run the wires, uh, plug the wires in here and feed them up behind the, uh, the cap here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and remove the cap from the mirror. All right. So all you need to do is pry apart the uh, each side of the mirror. There's little tabs all around it that hold it in place. Put this to the side. We're gonna start with our long wire that runs to the rear camera first. Plug this into the video in, which is here on the left side. And then we're going to feed this up and around. and then up into the headliner. So we're gonna clean this up here in a minute, but now we're gonna take our hard wire. We're gonna take this end of it and plug it into the DC in, which is on the top here, just like that. Same thing, we're gonna run the wire up here into the headliner. Both these wires are gonna follow the same path. So now that we've got that pretty much Generally in place, we're gonna go ahead and put 
the cap back around the mirror here. And again, this should crimp right into place. Okay, so this is what we've got currently here. We have the camera mounted to the windshield. And as you can see, we've run the wires up behind the little uh, plastic pieces behind the rear view mirror there. It's all tucked up inside of that. And then it's run all the way up and across the headliner and out right there. So now what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna run it down the A-pillar and down um, on the floorboard side of the vehicle instead of the roof line. I think it's just gonna be a little bit easier that way because the problem with the roof line, once you get to the B pillar, it's a little bit hard to stuff the wires back there. So I find that it's a little bit easier to go down than up. All right, before we go any further, I wanna point one thing out. The hardwire kit that we have here is actually not long enough. As you can see, this is the remaining slack that I've got. So the fuses that we're going to be tapping into are actually located in the trunk. So there's a couple fuses in there that are constantly powered even when the vehicle is off. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna cut off these three wires right here. I've got, I've got some additional wire here that we're going to use in order to um, connect the existing wire. And we're gonna be able to run it all the way back to the fuse box and reconnect these three wires and then plug these into our fuses and our grounding wire. Um, so what we're gonna do first is run these two wires all the way down the A-pillar here, across the floorboard, and all the way back into the trunk. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these three wires right here. I'm gonna give myself enough slack that uh, I've got some room to work with here, so go ahead and cut all three of these. Just like that. And I'm gonna to continue to feed this wire down through here. I zip tied the two wires that came out of the headliner here down here, and now I'm feeding it through behind the glove box and down. All right, let's show you where we're at right here. So as I mentioned, we ran the wires down the A-pillar here, and then behind the dash and down, and out and behind this weather stripping here and they popped out right here. So that's where we're at right now. What we're gonna do is run the wire all the way across this and all the way into the back seat. Since the hard wire was not long enough and we cut off the edges, the, the ends there, what we need to do is um, add some additional wire and extend it. So this is as far as it currently goes. Obviously this is not going to make it to the fuses in the back. So we're adding some additional wire. Okay, so here's where we're currently at. As you can see, I have extended our wire here, so after cutting off the uh, the ends there, I ended up splicing those three wires and I added three new wires, which I'm running now uh, along the floorboard here and into the back seat. So we're just going to tuck it basically underneath this carpet here, underneath this plastic trim piece, and then we'll move back to the back seat. And we'll follow it through here and under here and under the seat. If you pull up on the seat just a little bit, it'll come loose and you can tuck the wires underneath there. Once you run the wires underneath the seat, you can actually run it in this little crease here underneath between this piece and this piece of the seat and then fold your seat down and then route it back in here. And as you can see, I went ahead and removed the uh, the trunk carpeting right there. And now we have access to the fuses. And I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here for you in a minute after I clean up the wiring a little bit and get everything back into this area. I'm gonna bring you along and show you which fuses we're actually going to be tapping into. As you can see, I put this trim piece back on, got all the wires run all the way across and into the back seat. Under the seat, all this is all put back together already. Um, this wire here, this is the one that goes to the rear channel. And so I ran it the exact same way with the other three wires, ran it all underneath here. But this wire, the camera wire, actually ended up running up behind all of this weather stripping here. And currently, it's 
popped out right here on the uh, the C pillar basically so from there I'm gonna continue to run it up into the headline uh, headliner and then over in front of the third brake light in addition pull down the seat here you can see the other three wires that I ran from the front that we spliced some additional length onto finally pops out I basically ran it underneath uh, the seat here and it popped it out right here in front of the fuses which is where we need to go and so now that I've got all of those wires there I'm going to actually reconnect these three wires that we removed the red the yellow and the ground wire and uh, I'll show you exactly where those are going to be spliced into but first let's go ahead and mount the rear camera okay now we're going to go ahead and mount the rear camera here so got the lens here and then on the uh, this side here we've got our uh, video output and so we're gonna go ahead just so I can figure out where exactly we're going to put this um, as you can see I've got quite a bit of slack left here so I'm probably gonna end up tucking this up in the uh, headliner here but just want to make sure this plugs in okay just like that and I think I'm gonna try to center this camera as best as possible and so uh, let's see, I'm going to put it just below the third brake light here and I'm going to try to line up so that the middle of the camera lens is directly in the center of the windscreen here. Alright, so we've got the camera up there as you can see and I've got the wire nice and hidden. You only can see that little strip of wire right there. but the rest of it is tucked up in the headliner and so it's pretty much invisible so um, and again if if I don't like the placement of this I can always you know pull it off and reapply some new 3M tape and move it to wherever is better so um, if I happen to not like it there in the middle I'm not sure if it's gonna be you know a distraction when looking in my rear view mirror seeing that uh, but if it is I can always move it elsewhere so that portions done and finally, we can move on to the trunk. So again, here's where we're at. I'm gonna go ahead and splice those three uh, wires back on to the ends, and we'll come back to you. Okay guys, we're here in the trunk now. I went ahead and spliced in my wires and put some elect electrical tape on them just to protect them. So this is what we're left with currently. So I've got one red, one yellow and one ground so the best places to put these will be in fuses that are going to be powered um, pretty much whenever the car is also off um, so what we're going to do here is remove this bolt here this is going to be our ground and then there is a fuse box sheet right here which tells you each fuse, what their numbers are for. Um, each fuse is numbered here, and um, did some research online. And there's two fuses that we're going to be using that are going to be ones that have constant power. So the fuses that we're going to be using today are going to be number 143 and 161, which is over here, second one down. So again, 161, second one down here. Hopefully, you guys can see that. 161 and then 143 so we're actually looking at this upside down at the moment um, so if you are we're sitting in the back seat um, so 161 is going to be the second one down which is going to be this one here and then 143 is going to be the top one here this 5 amp so we're going to go ahead and take this tool right here and we're going to remove the second one down here and the first one here. Um, the best thing to do would be to use a fuse tap but I just don't happen to have any on hand so basically if you don't happen to have a fuse tap you can do exactly what I did. Pull the fuse out, wrap the wire around the fuse nicely and then reinsert it and make sure that it's got a nice uh, nice secure feel to it. In addition to that we went over here, removed this screw a little bit and then put the grounding wire on there, retightened it, so now everything should be buttoned up and ready to go. 
Um, other than that, I think we should be okay. Uh, everything else is cleaned up, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my trunk tray back in here and fold my seats back up, and then we're gonna turn this puppy on and make sure everything works. All right, guys, so we've got everything plugged in. I've pretty much got the entire interior put back together. I just have a bunch of tools that I gotta put back, but um, everything should be plugged in and ready to go. So let's turn on the car and see if it works. Oh, got a red light on the record button. So that's, uh, actually we have a red light on the status button. So that's a good sign, I think. It means we're getting power. Now it's green. <clears throat> Continuous recording will now start. Continuous recording will now start. So that's also a really good sign. I think we're good. So we've got some power. So now we need to play around with the uh, settings here and see what all we need to change, but that's a good start. Um, everything seems to be connected. Okay, so we've got a couple different features here with this Thinkware. Um, the first one here, it says, using the continuous recording features. So we've got two different modes here. One of them is continuous recording, which means that during driving, videos are recorded in one minute segments and stored in a continuously recording folder. There's also incident continuous recording. So when there's an impact to the vehicle, um, a video is recorded for 20 seconds, from 10 seconds before the detection to 10 seconds after the detection, and then it's stored in a separate folder. Additionally, there is recording manually. I can record a scene that I want to capture while driving and store it as a separate file, and all I need to do for that is um, click on this record, this red record button up there, and then that gives me the ability to manually record. When I press the record button, a video will be recorded for one minute, from 10 seconds before to 10 seconds after pressing the button and stored in a manual record folder. As I mentioned earlier in the beginning of my video, um, I also mentioned about a mobile app. So we're actually going to go ahead and download on my, um, my iPhone, we're going to download the Thinkware Cloud. And this basically gives me the, the ability to manage um, the recorded videos that uh, the dash cam records over time. This does give you instructions on how to connect an Android device as well as an iOS device. What we're going to do first is go to the App Store and then we're going to search for Thinkware Cloud. Thinkware Cloud is going to be this one here. So we hit Get. There's our app. So let's go ahead and open that up. And this is essentially what the app looks like. All right, in the bottom here, it says dash cam connection is required. So we're gonna click on that. And now we need to select our dash cam that we're going to connect to. So this is going to be a Thinkware FA200. There it is here. To activate the Wi-Fi, we need to press the Wi-Fi button on the dash cam. So up here on the dash cam, hope you guys can see that. Uh, next to the record button, there is a Wi-Fi button. So we're gonna get going to go ahead and push that. On your smartphone, connect to a Wi-Fi network whose name starts with Thinkware. Okay, so we're going to connect to the dash cam Wi-Fi. So we're gonna go to our iPhone settings and then Wi-Fi and then connect to the one that says Thinkware. So we're gonna pull up settings go to Wi-Fi and we're going to pick the Thinkware it's asking for a password for the Thinkware which is located here in my manual so I'm going to go ahead and enter that real quick once you've got that in there hit join and now we're connected so I'm gonna click on the app connected to a smartphone and there we go so we're connected there and we can go ahead and hit live view see what that looks like awesome all right so I'm in live view right now and it's telling me to align uh, the blue line with the center of the hood and then align the green line with the front edge of the hood so basically what we need to do is readjust um, the way that the dash cam is facing so if you recall earlier there's a little nut here that you can unscrew and then align um, the dash cam tilted up or down accordingly all right, so I've changed the angle of the front camera. This is what it looks like now. 
It's a pretty clear picture as you can tell. Looks pretty good. Um, if you click on the screen, up in the top right hand corner there's an R. If you click that, that'll show us the rear camera. And there you go. You can see the edge of my trunk spoiler right there. So I may adjust that up or down depending on what it looks like out on the road. But for now I'm going to leave it the way it is. Um, additionally, you can look down here and actually see a timestamp for the video. Uh, this tells me that's the model of the dash cam, what version it is, and we're using 11.7 volts. If you go back up here, go back out of it, you've got additional settings here. Here's your file list. So once you start having, um, once you start storing some files, you can go on here and pull. Um, <clears throat> pull some specific incidences if need be, uh, whether it be continuous, continuous incidents, um, detect motion detection, parking incidents, that sort of thing. If you go back, there's dash cam settings. And on here you can change a couple different things, memory card settings, camera settings, record settings, road safety, etc. So let's go into camera settings. I turned everything up to bright because I want it to be maximum brightness. Um, record settings. You can change the sensitivity of the continuous incident recording. Um, parking mode I changed onto the energy saving. That way when the car is parked I don't want it to be on the entire time. I just want it to do energy saving but you could also do time lapse or motion detect detection only. Um, high impact sensitivity etc etc. Um, down here we've got a cutoff voltage as well as um, winter time battery protection. So I selected the months that are winter here in Cincinnati, roughly. Um, and let's see. Road safety. System settings. I synchronize with my mobile, mobile device. That way it'll automatically detect the time and date based on what my mobile device is telling it to, be, to do. Um, daylight savings I have enabled, speed I changed to miles per hour, and then I also do want a speed stamp um, on my footage as well. So there's a lot of cool different little things on here. Um, dash cam info will tell you what version you're on, memory size, etc, etc. And then connection settings for Wi-Fi and um, eventually we can add on a GPS setting as well. So um, down here you have to log into their service for the Thinkware Cloud, push notifications, etc. So there's a lot of cool different things on, on here that we can do. But um, looking at the live view again, the camera looks pretty good. I'm, I'm actually really pleased with the way that it looks. And I'm, it's really good that we've got a rear camera now. So real excited to get this out on the road and actually utilize it for um, its actual purposes. All right, so one other thing, we're going to go ahead and turn the car off. Let's see what it does. Disconnected from a smartphone. Parking recording will now start. So there is some warranty available on the FA200 model. If you happen to have any issues with the main dash cam or any of the accessories that are inside the box, you have a one year manufacturer warranty. And then there's also a six month uh, warranty on the micro SD card. All right guys, that just about sums it up. Huge shout out again and a huge thank you to the guys over at Black Box My Car. If you guys are looking to purchase yourself a dash cam, whether it be the Thinkware FA200 or some other model, definitely go check out their website. They've got some 4K versions um, and some other versions that have some really cool features. So definitely go check out their website. If you guys have questions about the install, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. I said it about a hundred times. I'm